Hello, I'm Seth with Land the House. I was just speaking with my neighbor who brings an RV up for the summer and he has no water. I was thinking, what if I can run a ram pump up to his RV from these cascading waterfalls here? So that's what we're going to try and do today. For step one, I'm going to run about a hundred foot of poly pipe with this reverse siphon intake on it. From the other end of this pipe, I'm going to install this bucket intake. It's quite dirty, I'm going to have to clean it out. The concept is, water comes in the top from this poly pipe, fills up, and has this much room of silt catchment, and then this is where the drive pipe of the ram pump will come out. So let's go ahead and get these two items set up first. Okay, I've come up the creek, and I'm going to be setting this intake here into the water onto a couple of rocks. And then I want to use some bigger rocks to weigh this down so that it doesn't come back out. <sighs> Something to that effect. And I might want to put a few more on the pipe here to prevent that from having an airlock. The pipe is now installed in the creek and just kind of snakes its way along here over to this point right over here. Now I know this is not a permanent install. I'm just trying to figure out if water can make it to the top of this hill. On the back side of my poly pipe, I've added 40 foot uh, PVC. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get the siphon started from that point over there to here. It took a minute, but I managed to get that siphon going. Now I just have to purge all the air out to get the uh, best flow possible. To purge the air out of a pipe, to start the best siphon, I usually like to hold up a good sized portion of it where the water stops so it can build up. And then I drop it suddenly to help pull some of the air this way. Looks like that's about as good a flow rate as we're gonna get. Hopefully it's two gallons a minute. I'm gonna stick it here in the bucket. Let that start filling up. And we're gonna start working on the drive pipe. I used one more piece of 20 foot to fill up the bucket. So I actually have 190 feet for the drive pipe. So let's go ahead and get this installed from our bucket on down to the pump. And hopefully we can achieve somewhere around nine feet of head pressure. Okay, our bucket is full, drive pipe is connected. The problem now is gonna be, is that two gallons a minute? which is about what the pump requires to operate. Now this drive pipe is a bit too long, but it's what we have to do to get this to work. So let's go over down here and see what we got. The only other option would be to come down to about this next terrace and put in a stand pipe. And that would match the bucket source up there, but make the drive pipe a lot shorter. So we'll just see what we get here. There's potential for a lot of air to be in this pipe. So it may take some time to purge that. Let's go ahead and remove all this stuff. This is gonna be a way to uh, jettison the water off the side once the pump is going. Yeah, we got some air in there. Okay, it's being very difficult to purge the air out of the line. Either that or this line is just too long for the pressure wave. So I'm going to disconnect right here and install this stand pipe, which may actually be just a little bit too short. We'll give it a try here. Yeah, it's a little bit short. Water's still coming out the top here. I have to find a longer piece. I just got a piece of pipe that's about three feet long. I'm gonna stick it on top of this one so that it doesn't uh, have that leak anymore. 
And then to keep this upright, I've just got some twine. That standpipe right there raises about a foot above the source and gives us an, uh, about 40 to 60 less feet of drive pipe, which should be a significant boost to our pump here. Okay, I found out what my problem was all along. I tried to set this up about two days ago and I got some uh, sand or a rock or something into the inline valve and it was holding it open. And uh, so I just flushed it backwards and now it's working. So, time to hook up our garden hose and see how far up the hill we can go. This is the exciting part where you start hooking up hoses and go up the hill. My garden hose is pretty old and I'm not sure what kind of condition it's in. I guess we're gonna find out. I have 200 feet of garden hose up the hill so far. I'm gonna open up this and then start the pump. And because I have to fill the line for some back pressure, I have to start this a few times. After about 60 manual presses of the valve, I now have it going full speed. Let's head up to 200 feet of hose here and see if we have any results yet. A distance of about 150 feet and somewhere around, oh gosh, I don't know, 20 feet in elevation. I've got water here, there, it's there still. Uh, I think it's about right here. So it has climbed another five or so feet since I've been talking to you. So it's moving. We'll just keep waiting. Okay, we have results at the end of 200 feet here. Let's see what we're working with. Not a lot, but I think it's worth expanding another hose to see what we can get. I have 100 more feet, which should get us pretty close to the camper up here. 300 feet of garden hose got us all the way up to the camper. So I'm gonna give that some time and see how far the water makes it up there. Now this is a lot of setup for what my friend is needing. So here's what I'm thinking if he decides he wants a pump. There is about 12 feet of head pressure off this very last waterfall. So check this out. What I would do is use the same reverse flow uh, intake that I used before, run some rigid PVC across and down, and then have it siphon over to, uh, I don't know, three or four feet down, and have a small pipe come out to a standpipe to regain the full head pressure, okay? So it looks kind of like an H at this point. It would come down that full length pipe over about 20 to 30 feet this way, and have the pump. That way, sure it's climbing back up this 12 feet or so, and then going back up there. So the setup would be so much smaller and easier to deal with. We wouldn't have to mow around all this stuff. It would just come out over, around a certain distance, up and go on. That way, we could also run it along the woods here, and it would just be totally out of the way. So. That's the plan. And I may go ahead and just give it a try next week and see what happens. I think first though, I will bring a weed eater down here because this is some snaky stuff. I use the uh, GIS mapping on this hill and it's uh, 62 feet. I've walked it like eight times now. <laughs> Look at this. Nice flow right here at the top. I like it. So that's a good proof of concept to show that, yes, we're able to pump from down there to right here. Let's just, for the fun of it, move this hose up another uh, few feet to this trellis up here and see what we get. Success on that lift as well. So that was another, I don't know, 
four feet or so. Anyway, that's good enough for me to show that it works. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is install the pump down there off the big waterfall. And I was thinking, why cut all that vegetation when I could just glue the pipe together, lay it down there far enough that I can get down to the less snaky side. So I might do that. Well, today's video was pretty much just me playing in the creek with the ram pump. Thought that I would bring you along. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm gonna go ahead and load stuff up. Got the uh, four-wheeler trailer here, making things a lot easier to get back to the house. If you've enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I have uh, about 100 videos on the ram pump now, which is uh, super exciting. Also hit that thumbs up button. And do remember, I have four different sizes of ram pump available at Amazon, landahouse.com, landahouseshop.com, eBay, and probably a ton of other places. <laughs> so uh, links in the description if you need a ram pump. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.